Welcome to the Political Ferret Show. New content will be uploaded every Wednesday and Sunday. This video was financed by my Patreons. Thank you for making the change possible. This is kind of a summary of a quite interesting discussion I had and the core of it was that I stated that when you pay less taxes, you have more money left. And my counterpart disagreed there. And it was in the first moment quite hard to understand why he disagreed there, but we came to somehow some kind of an understanding and I want to walk you through that. So, the first idea was that when somebody pays taxes, so all the people pay taxes, the state gives something back. So it can be money, it can be services and so on. And the idea was there that all the money that the people give to the state come back in some way or another. But that's not true. The thing is, the state needs money to run itself. And the state has this tendency to do stuff that is not really in the interest of the people. So some of the money will vanish and will not go back to the people. One particularly easy thing to understand is foreign aid. When, you, when the state gives out foreign aid, the money goes, per definition, not back to its own people, but to some, someone else. And this is money that goes not back to the people who paid in the first place. If this is good or bad is a discussion for its own. But the thing is, the money that these people, this group gave the state, will not get as much money back as they paid in. The state will work around that with inflation and with taking on loans and so on, but loans, as we all know, is pretty much selling the kidneys of your kids, so it's not really a good idea. So in an ideal uh, situation, even in an ideal situation, you never get as much money back as you pay in. And this is something that most people will agree in the end. They will struggle with that and they will say, oh, but the state employs people and the people get money too and so on, yeah, yeah. But in the end, some money will be wasted for things nobody needs. So, what about a company and the employer? So, the company will make some money and it is more or less the money of the CEO. But the thing is, the company can only make the money because you work within the company. So the CEO will have to give you something of their money. So they, so they give you some of it. Um, how much? Well, this depends pretty much on you and we come to that a little bit later. So, but this money, the employer had to give you that you can do the work is not all the money you get. There are first and foremost, especially for Europeans, the non-wage costs. This is your pension and your health insurance and so on. This is money you don't even see. This is money that the employer has to give just pretty much to the state or to the, or to the instances and you don't see this money. This is not even money that is officially taxed. This is money that the employer has to pay to employ you, but you don't see the money at all. From the money that you see, a good proportion go away with the income tax. So this is the rest that stays on your side. Now, not really, because when you go to the store and you buy stuff, you pay again taxes on money that is already heavily taxed. Only a very small proportion of what your employer paid to employ you ends up in your hands. The rest go somewhere else. The thing is, and this is one of the core arguments, this bluish bar there, this uh, non-wage cost, this pension and so on, people argue that this you will have to pay for them anyway. And this is kind of true. We can discuss it is if it is the same amount and so on, but yes, if you want to have a pension and if you want to have health insurance and so on, you will have to pay for that anyway. This is absolutely, I, I would say this is right. But the thing is, this long orange bar, if the state is gone, well, this is money that you then get. And now it becomes really, really interesting because most socialists then say no. That's not true. You see, you are used to the little greenish thingy that you have right now and not to the big green bar. So what your employer will then do is he will say, well, 
I give you the small greenish bar because this is what you are used to get and not the whole stuff that I used to pay in the past. And this is a quite interesting argument that comes up over and over and over again, so it deserves to be debunked. So let's talk about how you got the job in the first place. Every job has a requirement. This requirement is based on skill and price. So you have to have a minimum skill. More is always better, of course. If I, I work for uh, a bag of peanuts and for, for a certain skill and somebody comes along who has a higher skill and works for the same pack of peanuts, the employer will take him because there is not really a reason to not take him. But there is and he will also uh, take him for less price. When somebody says I work for free, the employer will prefer him. So there is a limit of skill and price, which means you have to have a certain skill it can't be below that because then you can't do the job and there is a price and this price can go from zero to something but if it goes below this something it is not cost efficient and you can't do the job anymore on the other hand are you you will work for billions and billions and billions if somebody will pay that but you have to a lower threshold of price say okay I will work for this price but not below that because I have a certain skill set and the skill set goes in the other direction you can do pretty stupid stuff everybody can do pretty stupid stuff but you can also do high skilled stuff but the skill is somewhere in, in the end you this somewhere is a limit what you can do and after that comes stuff that you can't do right now and in the moment and when these two areas meet, when you have a skill set that fits the requirement of a job and your idea of your wage fits the idea of the wage of the employer, we, you will have a deal and you can do the job. But nothing of that is really carved in stone except of the requirement skill. And if the market changes and you have more possibilities, your idea of what you should earn will increase. So this might lead to a situation where the employer has the problem that he doesn't get anyone because the idea of the price did rise. So what they have to do now is to raise the wages. They have no other chance to get people than to raise the changes. And these things can move up and down, up and down. And So your wage is in the end a question of supply and demand. It's always a question of supply and demand. So if your employer says now, no, I just give you this little proportion, but, but the company next door says, why should I? I mean, I had before that I had to pay that and that. And if I give him exactly the same, I get a very skilled worker. So those companies who try to do that and to try to screw people over will succeed with some people, but in the end they are gonna be screwed. And the other thing is that also the company has a tax burden and if that tax burden goes away, well, they have more money anyways. So in the end, less taxes leads to a situation where the employer has more money and you have more money. And this is quite contrary to the socialist idea that, that either the employer has to suffer or the worker has to suffer. One steals from the other. This is the idea. But if you cut the taxes, the only one who suffers is the state, pretty much. And because the state can do less stupid things. Again, I'm not an anarchist, I'm a minarchist. I'm okay with, let's say, 10% taxes and the state does whatever he has to do with 10% taxes. Mostly secure the border, finance the juristic system, finance the police, finance the fire departments, these kind of things. But the state can do that with 5 to 10% of taxes. The thing is, whenever you lower the taxes, it goes to the benefit of pretty much everyone who is not tied to the state. And who is tied to the state? Well, the state will always buy stuff that nobody else buys. And stuff that nobody else buys is not really, really, really important. Then comes, of course, the argument that all the poor will suffer and die because nobody cares for them. I don't believe that. I would uh, pay some of my money for that. I mean, it's, it's peanuts in the end. But I would expect that people say thank you, thank you for that, which they don't do right now. Right now, I pay for a lot of people who do not work and they spit in my face and I don't like that. But if they come over and say thanks that you give me money so I can uh, 
buy bread for my family, we are cool because they increase my quality of life and I increase their quality of life. It's a deal, it's not a problem, we can do that. So I hope I could provide some of the insights and some points for argumentation. Tell me what you think about it in the comments, like, share and subscribe as always and have a great time.